councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. It is a big idea. A new world order. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. This global governance at last is it one world, the central bankers in charge. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? As for me, give me liberty or give me death! The answer to 1984 is 1776. It's December 31st, 2012. I'm Alex Jones, and get ready for a very special edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Straight ahead. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, the globalist witch Dianne Feinstein cackles as her Obama-backed <laughs> plan to begin treasonous gun-grabbing accelerates. Uh, I'm going to be putting forward a package. And I'm going to be putting my full weight behind it. Then, we break down drones in the skies over the Vikings-Packer game last night. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, it's official. Dianne Feinstein has a bill written publicly where you turn your guns in at her discretion uh, across the board. And it's really not any surprise, because back in 1995, she told 60 Minutes that if she had her way and had the votes, and she thinks she has them now, she'd tell Mr. and Mrs. America, turn in your guns. Here's that clip. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. So do I get an apology all these years telling you they want your guns? I mean, they've all written books and made comments, and the UN says it, and the attorney general's called for all guns to be taken before when he was deputy attorney general. They want your guns. They'll use tragedies out of 315 million people. They'll use those poor little dead kids to disarm you because they're a bunch of tyrants. I'll get you and your little guns, too. <laughs> Am I pretty? <laughs> so there you go. Now let's go to her also in 1995, talking about how a terrorist group was trying to kill her. Talk about false flag. That's another history lesson. Uh, and how she had her own gun to protect herself. So she has five bodyguards that can still carry, but you can't because she gets to have flying monkeys. You don't. Here we go. I know the sense of helplessness that people feel. I know the urge to arm yourself because that's what I did. I was trained in firearms. I'd walk to the hospital when my husband was sick. I carried a concealed weapon. I made the determination that if somebody was going to try to take me out, I was going to take them with me. And she goes on and on. It's a full two-minute clip up at InfoWars.com. But we just played you a clip of her saying she wants you to turn your guns in. Man, we're in trouble. Let's go to a clip from Obama uh, talking about there will be resistance to the plan he has, which is the Feinstein plan. Let's go to that clip. You know, I've been very clear uh, that you know, an assault rifle ban, you know, 
banning these uh, high capacity clips, background checks, that there are a set of issues that I have historically supported and will continue to support. But will there be resistance? Absolutely, there, there will be resistance. Uh, I'm going to be putting forward a package, and I'm going to be putting my full weight behind it. You know, I hope all of you out there go read the bill. She's got it's on her Senate website. It says, well, you got to go to the ATF and register all your guns, and maybe you can keep them, but we'll also have a forced buyback if we want to of legal guns. I mean, it's a gun confiscation bill that just gives open-ended power, and the average right-winger and libertarian's like, oh, well, you don't need those anyways. Folks, they're doing this because they want to go after all the other liberties. I mean, this is insane level when you know all the facts. It is just amazing, but they think the public's dumbed down. They can go, children died, not the ones we kill with drones every day, but others, give us your guns, we love you. Just amazing. Now, here's a couple of clips of Biden this year in, in the uh, debate saying he wrote the assault weapons ban, the original one she wanted, a total ban. But then in another clip in the campaign saying that oh, we're not going to take your guns. That's a conspiracy theory. Here they are. I'm the guy that originally wrote the assault weapons ban that that uh, became law and then we got defeated. Then Barbara, excuse me, then Diane Feinstein uh, went to town on it and did a great job. I guarantee you, Barack Obama ain't taking my shotguns, so don't buy that malarkey. Don't buy that malarkey. They're going to they're gonna start peddling that to you. I got two. If he tries to fool my Beretta, he's got a problem. I like that little over yeah, and under. You know, yeah. I'm not bad with it. So give me a break. You know, they admit that both parties do this, they're all a bunch of crooks, but Democrats are the leading edge of the globalist takeover, that they get little breakdowns by their campaign people in each town. So when they're in Kentucky, you've seen the footage, we played it before, here we go, how are y'all doing today? I'm doing real good. And then when they go before a Hispanic crowd uh, in like Los Angeles, they go, hello everyone, do you want a taco? Uh, or they, I'm seriously, folks, I mean, it is so insulting to all these groups of people. And so Biden thinks he's with a bunch of rednecks. He's like, there ain't nobody gonna get my gun. Guarantee you ain't gonna have my <laughs> Just absolute bull. Remember, we did a show of, like six months ago with Perry when he'd go around. I mean, yes. yeah, buenos dias, everybody. I mean, let me tell you something. I go speak to people in Russia, I'm going to talk in the way I talk. If, if I go talk to folks in Florida, I'm going to talk the way I talk. If I go talk to a crowd of white people, black people, whatever it is, this is how I talk, okay? Get used to it. But they think that's what you want to hear, and it's a total lie. Nobody's going to get my Beretta, let me tell you. Meanwhile, he wrote a bill in the 90s that would have made you turn them in. <laughs> By the way, it almost makes you want to pull up the... If you don't believe me, just type in Hillary, Hillary speech in Kentucky. What's the exact clip? We've played it before. It's, it's something like Hillary talks... I, I forget the exact headline. we got to find it. we got to have that tomorrow. She goes... She goes, I ain't no ways tired. I ain't no green garden. I mean, it sounds like the Beverly Hillbillies granny tripled. I mean, you can't even understand. I ain't no ways tired. Me on grandma. I mean, can you imagine if I, like, say, went to... Oklahoma, because that's really where the Clampets are supposedly from. <laughs> and I walked in and I went, Mingo, Grand <laughs> I mean, what did, the hell is wrong with these people? But again, they think that they're like, they're all CIA and, and, and that's all anthropology, sociology. So they're all into these little files. All right, let me hear the dialect again. Mingo, Grand Grand Bong, <laughs> Biden, ain't nobody gonna get my Beretta. I wish we could find the Hillary does redneck voice or something. I, I forget what it is. I mean, it is unbelievably funny. We'll play it tomorrow night. I know, I know we're almost out of time. Okay, I'm done covering that. You know, I laugh about this. Stuart Rhodes is coming up. This is deathly serious. This is an article not in the news rundown that Kurt showed me about an hour ago. Can we show people this real quick? I'm gonna cover this tomorrow. The case for death panels in one chart.
and uh, this is out of Slate. I thought death panels were a conspiracy theory and didn't exist, where these panels will decide to kill old people. Hey, but look, the U.S. costs more money. Well, let's kill them, hell. You get a better hamburger, too, if you throw away your own trash at McDonald's, and then all that does is lower the quality and get rid of entry-level jobs. We live in the society we demand. Like Salente says, quality! I want to get him back on, by the way. we got to get him back on and talk about all this. Can we get him on the radio and the TV? All right, let's get to a few other articles here. Uh, look at this. Uh, Dianne Feinstein, I carried a concealed weapon. I already played that. Video Dianne Feinstein says her goal is to disarm Americans. Played that. Look at this one. Big Sis spy drone at Vikings games. To me, that's not even the news. The news is they had TSA with pistols strapped on their thighs like they were commandos fighting Al-Qaeda. No, you, you go bomb innocent villages with drones and feel powerful. But they had all these TSA guys out there groping everyone. And, I mean, I'm sorry. I've done this on tape. I mean, it's not that I'm a tough guy. I see guys standing around with shaved heads and hats on all going, hmm, hmm. And I walk in and I'm like, and you're just here to intimidate the public that you're trying to protect people. Your bosses run Al-Qaeda. The government ships in the narcotics. Those guys get so scared so quick because you know why? I don't care if they pull out guns and kill me right on the spot. Uh, you see, you get gang raped when you act like a sheep. It, you understand? But you can't act like you're confident. People pick up on that. You got to be confident. You got to say, God, I'm going to fight these evil people. I'm weak. Make me strong. That's my prayer. That's all I ask God is I'm weak and pathetic and dirty rags, but I don't like these evil people, and I know you don't. Please give me the guidance to beat them. Now, let me tell you something. God will give you that guidance, but let me tell you something. We're going to defeat these people together, my friends. Yeah, I got like 20 other stories we haven't even gotten to. Black boxes or spy boxes? U.S. regulatory agencies want to make car data recorders mandatory. Boom. Feds mandate black boxes in cars. Uh, the Trans-Texas Corridor is back. Perry secretly signed it. We're going to cover this tomorrow night with Jerome Corsi. They've got hidden cameras in the VA hospitals and the smoke detectors watching everything you do. That's in the Tampa News. Uh, smoke detector camera videos still not released to veterans' family. And then I want to give you a Ted Nugent quote. And uh, that is it for our transmission until we come back with the guest. To my mind, it is wholly irresponsible to go into the world incapable of preventing violence, injury, crime, and death. How feeble is the mindset to accept defenselessness? How unnatural, how cheap, how cowardly, how pathetic. That's right. The government's all strutting around with guys going, I mean, you know, how, you know how pathetic it is to have the federal forces strutting around trying to intimidate people? You know what type of little cowardly boys they've got to hire that want to do that? People that are really strong are embarrassed of their strength and embarrassed of using it against people that aren't causing a problem. And uh, you know what? I say the New World Order is a sack of empty hot air. I say you're a fraud, and I say we're calling your bluff. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with the final transmission of 2012 with the founder of Oath Keepers. How will the military and police respond to the systematic gun grab? That's coming up. Stay with us. And now, a special Christmas message from the Federal Reserve. This Christmas, the Federal Reserve would like to wish all of our slaves a very merry quantitative easing four. Our current chair, Ben Bernanke, has perfected the art of giving money to foreign banks for many years, as seen in this rare home movie. Ben is currently giving these banks 85 billion per month. Excellent work, Ben. Once again, this is the Federal Reserve wishing you and yours a very merry quantitative easing four, and we hope to destroy your economy in the new year. I really enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and, uh, well, we resist them via a free market system. Hello, my fellow info warriors. Alex Jones here introducing you to the ProPure family of gravity-fed filters. Now, you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes, fluoride, lead, mercury, arsenic and one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels, these poisons are gravity-fed filters. And ProPure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic, 
On top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the ProPure Big Brush Finish is on a stand, so it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the ProPure King Large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the ProPure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The Globalist obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. And I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure Gravity Filter System. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water. Uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. ProPure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity-fed water system in the world. ProPure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code, water to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. ProPure is the name. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com, sign up as a distributor, and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com.
and welcome back to the final segment of the final show uh, transmission of 2012 here on the 31st. We are about to plunge into 2013. And the new issue of InfoWars Magazine, the January 1st, 2013 edition, is out. And the headline is 2013, the year America dies with a question mark. And when Stuart Rhodes, constitutional lawyer and the founder of Oath Keepers, uh, leaves us in about uh, 25 minutes, I will go over uh, 2013 and uh, what happened in 2012 and what we're facing in 2013. It is not hyperbole or constitutionalist rhetoric that we are in dire straits. Um, a week and a half ago, Kurt Nemo wrote an article, the first to do so, pointing out that Feinstein and Cuomo uh, had put out statements saying that they were looking to forcibly buy back all semi-automatic handguns and rifles, most firearms uh, of modern manufacture. It's estimated close to 60%. And it took about a week for people to go, oh, wow, she even has a bill on her website that's going to be introduced officially on the first day of Congress on Thursday. So I want to get the message out to you. This is not a drill. It's not a game. In the earlier segment, if you just tuned in, we played a clip of Feinstein saying if she can get the votes, she would make Mr. and Mrs. America turn in all the guns. I'm going to play that clip again for Stuart Rhodes coming up uh, a little bit later in this interview. But I want to get this across to you, ladies and gentlemen. They're not playing games, okay? And it is now time to realize that they're dropping the hammer on the entire Bill of Rights and Constitution. Who spearheaded... Uh, just yesterday, the ramming through and reauthorization of the FISA Act, uh, allowing the continuation of warrantless wiretapping against the American people by the NSA. Dianne Feinstein, head of the Intelligence Committee. These are traitors, and they're getting rid of the First Amendment, the Tenth, the Fourth, the Second. The Second is the big canary in the coal mine. Because they only would do something hammered down like this if they had some really bad stuff planned. Now, I want to go over the U.N. Treaty coming up in March that they admit they plan to uh, merge this with, uh, with Stuart. But first, I want to ask the constitutional lawyer. He's also worked in uh, Congress uh, under Ron Paul. Uh, his take on why they're moving so quick and why they're out in the open right now. Because remember, we were conspiracy theorists uh, when we would talk uh, on air about their statements that they plan to ban our guns. And they would say, oh, that doesn't exist. Now they're out in the open. And I saw the build up to this even before Newtown. So Stuart Rhodes of OathKeepers.com uh, joins us. If you're a new viewer, Stuart, a few years ago, founded Oath Keepers to get military and police, both active duty and also retired, to state that they will not follow unconstitutional orders. Uh, because when Stuart was at Yale, he won a big award for his paper, uh, there uh, on uh, the enemy combatant designation for the American people. People said, oh, that'll never happen. Now it's law. They can secretly disappear us. So everything we've warned you about is now manifesting. So now we're going to tell you what the next enemy operation affecting the battle space is going to be and how we need to counter that because there is a silver lining in every dark storm cloud. Now it's out in the open. But again, they would not risk uncloaking and, uh, and, and, and going from being submerged to the surface unless they were about to roll out on every front. And I don't think I know uh, that this attack, this rollout against the American people will be accompanied by false flags, whether it's more fast and furious operations uh, or more attacks on federal buildings by the globalists to be blamed on the uh, American movement. Uh, we're going to be discussing all of that. Okay, Stuart, you heard me kind of talk about some of the issues I want to get into. We'll get into any other tidbits uh, that you think are important. But first off, why are they so naked now? What does this signify? And then we'll get into uh, the task force saying they're going to back Feinstein. Um, she controls the rules committee coming in with this legislation. Uh, they're going to attempt a physical uh, hand in that's in the bill. Uh, and we're not seeing even a lot of uh, concern from the Republicans. Again, that's another signpost that, that we're going into DEFCON 1 here. Yeah, I agree completely. And, and it's two, two big factors that are, that are doing this. 
One is, is that these are things they've always wanted for, for many decades. As you said, Feinstein herself has stated, you know, as far back as 15, 16 years ago, that if she could, she'd take all the guns. And so what they've done is they've waited, just like the neocons waited for 9-11 to hit and used that as their excuse for propelling the American people into their foreign policy uh, preferences. This is much the same way. They waited for the right crisis, and they're not letting this crisis go to waste. This is what they've been waiting for to trigger and use what they've had waiting in the wings. Feinstein said on her own website, she's been working on this bill now for over a year. It has nothing to do with the kids killed in Newtown. It has everything to do with, with just her desire to disarm the American people, and now she feels she has her Second Amendment Reichstag fire that she can use to do it with. And we knew this was gonna be coming. This is why back in 2009, when we first started Oath Keepers, our Declaration of Ten Orders begins with, number one, we will not obey any orders to disarm the American people. And we say there in particular, we oppose a renewal of the misnamed assault weapons ban or the enactment of H.R. 45, which would register and track gun owners like convicted pedophiles. This is back in 2009. And this is exactly what this bill does. Feinstein wants to do a complete assault on the Second Amendment and to track you like a registered sex offender, like a convicted pedophile. This is what she wants to do. And so we knew this was coming, and, and we knew she was waiting for the right pretext, and now here, now here it is. The other factor, though, I believe, is they're running out of time. These power elites, if they really were confident in their absolute power over us, they would just take the mask off all the way and just, just you know, lord over us in unlimited tyranny. But they know they can't do that. They're, they're, they're vulnerable and afraid that we're waking up en masse, which we are. And so, but now it's happening is they're being forced to move their timeline faster because we are you know, waking up and the liberty movement is growing exponentially. Every year it gets bigger and bigger. And so I feel like they have to speed things up before they're fully ready. They don't have 30,000 predator drones over, over our skies. They don't have the, the massive NSA database that they wanna have, not yet, that's coming. But they're not quite there yet. But in some ways they're being forced to speed up the timeline. And I think that's good. Let's get it over with now. Well, Stuart, you're not putting a good face on this just to cheer people up. I mean, it's the best of times, worst of times. You're right. All their top planners and CFR documents and statements to each other say they're in deep trouble and that if they don't get their world government now, they're going to go to jail for all the derivatives and crimes and insider trading that Congress has engaged in. So the good news is we're in the fight. The bad news is this is a cornered, dangerous vicious authoritarian enemy, and they have nothing to lose. Uh, they're hammered down. But I hope everyone out there watching understands that they are the resistance. They are the hope. They better pray to God and ask God to lead God and direct them and give them provision because, because this is history happening. This isn't a game. These aren't just boss hog corrupt people we're dealing with. These are would-be total slave masters. They've gutted the Bill of Rights and Constitution. They've gutted our economy. They're gutting the dollar. They're bringing in Agenda 21 in their own statements that is a government designed to impoverish you. And it was Oliver Wendell Holmes that said, uh, well, you know, taxes are to ensure that we have a civilization. Well, what about when the civilization is designed around predatory destruction of real civilization? Uh, I mean, this is a very sick group we're dealing with, and they are moving ahead, putting on their afterburners because they're in trouble. They've ordered the 30,000 armed drones in the skies. That'll take five years to roll out their own words, Washington Post. They've ordered and now have the 1.6 billion bullets, the armored vehicles. But they're trying to train the police and military that we're the enemy, we're the terrorists. And because of Ron Paul's work and my work over 17 years and Bob Fletcher's work warning people 20 years ago and hundreds of other prominent people getting laughed at at first, people are going, wait a minute, I heard all this. I was warned about this. And especially you the last four or five years with Oath Keepers warning people, wait a minute, it's real, so I don't, it's important. How about you speak directly to the globalists, because I know they're watching, uh, and, and some of them are a little bit more sensible and aren't true psychopaths, they're just corrupt. Uh, I mean, it's important to talk to the enemy occasionally, 
I'd like to hear your your views to them because I know this information gets translated over. A lot of the globalists and their minions actually uh, watch. Uh, are there courses for them to back off? Is there a third way for them to segue out on this? Uh, and, and, and what are the dangers to them uh, if they try to go ahead and, and ram this through? Because they're operating according to a blueprint as if they haven't been revealed and exposed. As they continue to accelerate this program, don't they only confirm everything we've said? No, absolutely. But, but here's the message for them is that they should just leave the country. Because if they try to do this, and I know they won't, and they have the same kind of hubris and arrogance that, that Parliament and the King had back in time of our founding fathers. They believed that the Americans would not fight. And I believe these elitists, like, like Feinstein and her handlers, um, even higher above her, believe the same thing. They think the American people will not fight. They believe they can just do the same thing here that was done in Britain or was done in Australia. But it, it's not going to be the same way. There are millions of Americans who own firearms, for example, just on this one issue alone, who will not turn them in and they will not register as sex offenders. They're just not going to do it. And there's, there's uh, millions of veterans out there who are mentally prepared and spiritually prepared to fight. I talk to them all across the country. So I can tell you right now it's not going to go down that way. There's going to be a fight. Now, they might still think, well, there'll, there'll be a fight, but we'll be able to to crush this small resistance. I think it's gonna be a lot bigger and a lot more pervasive than they think. It's gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be um, within the ranks of the current serving military and police within um, within their own government. So, and also among the veterans, it's gonna be widespread across the country. And I don't think they understand that. I think it's very much like what happened in 1775. They're gonna be, they're gonna be very surprised at the reaction. You know, they got their butts handed to them all the way back to Boston back then when the entire countryside rose up, not just a few guys, not just a, a small organized coalition around, you know, um, Captain Parker. It was it was the whole countryside rose up all across New England, and they chased them all the way back to Boston and then the late siege to Boston. That's right, the except for one problem. I predict, because they did it with Oklahoma City, we know, you know, the name of the feds that planted the bombs, it's all covered in a noble lie, the film. We've interviewed the police officers that were threatened by them and, you know, everything else. They're going to attack daycare centers and kill small children and blame it on the Patriot movement. That's why it's essential to expose false flags now to psychologically free people and inoculate them to the fact that obviously no Patriots are going to target children. And that's why it's important to understand we're not going to offensively attack. But clearly, just like in 1775 at Lexington and Concord, they're going to come and try to pick cases of patriots that they think have a weird background to demonize the entire movement. They're going to psychologically try to frame this. And so we need to just continue to pound that out, the scenarios, and that when they stage these terror attacks to blame us, we need to have liberty operatives who are already everywhere and we've already seen this with the underwear bomber and other cases, our people are already there watching and are going to expose them. And so, uh, you know, the problem is, is that they're more sophisticated than King George III. How do we deal with that PSYOP? How do we deal uh, with it when they blow up a police station, Stuart, and blame us? Well, as you just said, you've got people already are inoculated against this. I would say that within the ranks of the Patriot Movement, none the Ron Paul supporters, and even beyond them, um, people already see what's going on. They see, they see the very, the very um, Machiavellian manipulation of this shooting, and so it's it's much easier now to reach them with the with the. And also, there's a history of, of false flag, um, starting with the Reichstag fire from the Nazis. They did it themselves, and so I think most gun owners in this country, at least ones that are, that are awake and aware, uh, understand that that's a possibility and probably a likelihood. And so they're watching for it. So I think it's already a great deal of inoculation. What we have on our side is the internet something they did not have back then. So we have the free flow of exchange of information, which is, a, which is exactly why they're running out of time. But I think what has to be done right now, though, is, is a preemptive nullification, a, a preemptive standing up of the American people in mass. Well, that's what I said a month ago. I could sense this attack coming. Uh, how do we stand up then? How do we decisively seize control uh, of the narrative? Well, I think the first thing to do is is that, you know, we do not want to wait until after it's passed and then be reactive. We need to stand up right now and say that I don't care what the details are of her bill. It's not to her to dictate what features I can have in my rifle or not. We should all stand up as 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 a, as a whole nation, 
as individuals and say, I will not comply, whatever, whatever it is she passes, I don't care. I will not register like a sex offender. I'm not gonna comply. Not one, not one dotted I across T of that legislation will I consider legitimate. And I will nullify it as an individual, but also in my community and start right now. So I'm gonna encourage people to do what I did, you know, last week on Oath Keepers where I had my, my declaration, my personal pledge, to not comply with an assault weapons ban, I encourage everyone out there to go do the same thing for themselves. Copy what I wrote, put your own name in it, you know, change it however you want to. Make your own personal declaration by the millions across the country that you will not comply. And by the and way, the this would be like if they announced, uh, hey, it's time for black people to report to be slaves again. I mean, yeah. it, it, this is an unconstitutional, dictatorial statement. It's like Hitler saying all the Jews have got to go, you know, to the to the concentration camp. Yeah. And, and, and they went dutifully and did it. Barbara Boxer gets up there and Dianne Feinstein gets up there, these two demonic senators, and they say, we're going to make mom and dad, we're going to make Sally Soccer Mom and Joe Sixpack, their exact quote was, you know, yes, we're going to have Mr. and Mrs. America turn their guns in. And there they are. Meanwhile, this woman has bodyguards and the rest of it. Why are they so desperate? We already answered that to get them now. I, I mean, they really are, they're in control through fraud, but I, they are miscalculating. I mean, even if 99% of gun owners turn their guns in and they try to go purge and persecute the 1.5 million that don't, that's an unstoppable force right there. And sure, they'll be able to kill patriots up front and advertise it, and they think that's going to scare others to go turn their guns in. It's going to cause the exact opposite. And, well, here's, here's and what happened, though, as, as you just alluded to, people need to draw the line at, at going down and registering themselves in the first place. If you are willing to go down to a police station, be fingerprinted and photographed like a sex offender, and tracked, at that moment, you have given up your liberty. It doesn't matter if you get to go home with your rifle for now until you die, and then it, then it gets turned into the government. That's not the point. At the moment you walked in there and allowed yourself to be treated like a slave is when you accepted your servitude. And by the That's way, Stuart, as you know, they already have the Knicks background, and before that, the five-day waiting period and all that. Yeah, they already have the guns. They already know they already know how many guns you bought. This, as you said, is an act of submission. Like I said last year when the ATF told four Western states, you've got to report to us once somebody buys two or more guns, they were already getting it reported to them. It, it, it's just that with outside law, outside Congress, getting gun shops to comply, just like TSA sticking their hands down our pants. But, but listen, I want you to expand on that, but I've got to make this point. You're a constitutional lawyer, but the New York Times, guys, type in... Um, this headline, a tougher assault weapons ban, NewYorkTimes.com, it'll come up. I, this article breaks down her new bill on her site. Her site says, with a summary of the bill, that, well, you'll go to the ATF with fingerprinting and background, and we'll have a forced buyback as well. It actually has a provision in there to just say, turn the guns in, and Como and her have both said they're going to go for that. So. This is even worse than what people are saying. This isn't just go register as a sex offender because you own a gun and the newspaper publishes your name and oh, the shame, just outrageous. It, yeah, there it is, a tougher assault weapons ban. If you go down in the article, they, uh, uh, read the article, they confirm in there that yes, it has a gun buyback provision. And she says, we will need funding in the bill for a forced gun buyback provision. Well, that's what she and Cuomo, next guys type in, Cuomo says there may be forced buyback. That's the original Infowars.com article that first broke it um, two Fridays ago. That's the one I want to show. So, so again, going back and forth here, Stuart, uh, this is even worse. So I agree. I've said on air, this is an unlawful, unconstitutional thing. I'm not turning any of my semi-automatic rifles and handguns in, period. I'm not turning them in, and I'm not going down to the ATF to be abused by those people. I'm not doing it. They're criminals that staged a false flag terror attack of uh, what happened with Fast and Furious, and they were involved in the Oklahoma City bombing. I am not going to these terrorists. Right. That's, that's, that's what we have to have. And, and it does make a difference also in the practical sense because they don't have a record of all the private sales. 
There are, I know people who, who've never bought a gun in a, in a gun store. They buy it through private sales, out of the paper, so that they don't have to worry about the government knowing what they have. And so this is what they want to register you. Registration is the first step towards confiscation. But really the big point is, is that you give up psychologically and morally, you admit your defeat, you admit your servitude when you allow yourself to register, like you said, just like the Jews were registered in Nazi Germany, just like slaves had to go register before they could walk outside their master's house. So they, they when they have you do that, they own you after that point. Oh, so yeah. For those that don't know, going back, because I know you're a historian and taught you know history at Yale, we need to, because I've done reports on this years ago, I need to dig back up the old manuals and things that were translated out of the Roman uh, you know, Latin into English into French for the plantations in the New World, but uh, mainly uh, the sugarcane plantations of the Caribbean. It was all licensing and a card to travel around. That was for slaves. The Romans made slaves with a piece of twine tie a thing around their neck about what their business was. And you notice that th they want the IRS down to give you permission to travel. In the U.S., they're announcing all this. Frisk at public places. We're going into slavery. But people only think it could be Django is the only slavery that ever existed. Some Hollywoodized BS. How do we counter this? Well, like I said, for right now we need to en masse stand up and say no. Uh, one of the great worries and fears among the patriot movement is that each person will be the only one who stands up. This is what Solzhenitsyn pointed out in his in his Gulag Archipelago is that they all paled in terror, itemized or, or atomized, you know, as individuals waiting for the knock at the door when they should have reacted by setting up ambushes. They should have coordinated. They should have said, "Here's the line, but nothing to lose." So what we should do is preemptorily make a make a declaration: we will not comply. We will resist. And the more of us that do that, that way we all know we are not alone, we are shoulder to shoulder, we are united, and we have each other's backs. And then the police need to stand up. Good police officers right now must speak out. They must pledge. They must sign a public declaration that they will not do this. And, and if they want to fire them all, then, then that's fine. Then we'll know that all the rest that are still there are traitors. So we have to get the police to, to stand up and, and declare they will not do this, and the military also. And I believe if you have enough people do that, that will keep us from feeling like we are alone. I don't know if it'll make the, the bad guys back off. Who knows? Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But regardless, we should do it so that we are solid, so we know we are not going to go down the road of Nazi Germany. We're not going to go down the road of Stalinist Russia. It will be more like 1775 America. That's an important thing for us to get straight in our heads. Well, what the establishment needs to realize is when they're around all these yuppies and all these soft people that don't stand for anything, and they're all around their yes men and their big towering high rises, they need to understand they've turned the general public by and large into mindless jellyfish. But there's still tens of millions of people who have tried everything they can peacefully to not be slaves and who are not going to go along with this. I mean, if the, the military couldn't even hold Baghdad, they're not going to be able to hold the United States. And this is in the middle of a depression. See, they're imploding the economy by design, but they can't disengage once, once, once they've you know gone to this point. And that's what's so scary about this is that, is that I know history, you know history, I know the mind of the people, I know it's not going to go well, and I'll be honest, I have a horror for the average foolish cop who's going to be sent out to try to stop people at checkpoints and run backgrounds and stuff. Because, yeah, people will be picked up and arrested in the first few waves. But after that, the general public is not going to sit around and wait. And, and they have billed, I saw this five years ago during the start of the campaign, the last election before this one, where they billed him as Obama as the new Lincoln. And and, and, and all these movies, like seven or eight of them, where Lincoln crushes the states' rights movement. And if you are against the federal government, you're a racist. And now they openly have articles every day saying, yeah, we're going to take the gun owners' guns, and if they fight back, they're going to be terrorists. And Obama will just shut off the Internet with a kill switch, and he'll arrest the newspaper editors. And the new Steven Spielberg movie glorifies all this. And they're, they're on the site saying, become the new Lincoln. I mean, I have articles here where... Uh, they have Reuters calling for him to be a dictator and to use executive orders uh, to go after people. I mean, this is so over the top 
and you've got all these weird socialists and collectivists who are on their forums and on their Democratic underground and on their sites bragging uh, on Huffington Post that, yeah, I can't wait to be, you know, in a federal militia. There's even a petition to do this to take on these vets and these gun owners. I mean, if these chicken-necked socialist authoritarian fake liberals uh, yeah, there it is. Click on that link. Even without Congress, Obama can act to restrict guns. There it is. I mean, they, the truth is they're having a fantasy about raping our wives and beating us up in FEMA camps. I mean, these are nasty little bastards. Do they have any idea that if they actually try this, what's going to happen to them with real people, with real guns? I mean, do, are, do they have any idea? They see our restraint as weakness, Stuart. No, they don't, have, they don't have a clue. And it's the same as the attitude the British officer corps had towards the American colonists, you know, with one of them saying you could just go up and down the coast with a battalion of Royal Marines and, and, uh, and geld all the males, you know, as though they would just stand there. So they, they, they believe, they had the hubris to think the Americans would not fight. And the elites and their cronies here today had the same attitude. And it's really pathetic to watch the political left in this country. You know, back during the Bush years when they were railing against what Bush was doing in the Constitution, um, they were right, and and many times I thought that hey we have common cause. But now they've, they've taken the mask off, and they're guys in power, and they've shown themselves to be what they really are, as a bunch of friggin' Marxists. And so you know, my message to them is is come and take them, go for it, but have the courage to do it yourself. But they won't. They'll try to send the military. But I got to tell you, there's a lot of guys in the military that are not going to not going to do it. They're going to stand down, or they're going to desert and go home. Or they're going to go active and help fight. They're going to help fight them on the side of the resistance. They're not going to just just go along with this stuff. And so these liberals who who believe they can just easily roll over the American people, um, over flyover country, are are delusional. They really are, and they don't know what's coming. Well, by the way, when I read their sites, these are mainline writers. They talk about the disgusting Midwest and the disgusting American people, and 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 and, and they talk about anybody who's rural as scum. And, and it's really disgusting. And they fantasize. I mean, you've worked in Congress. You've been around these people. But I have video of it, my film, Martial Law. I've been do, fighting the globalists 20 years, but 17 years on air now. I wanted to ask you, have you ever run into this? Because I've run into it, no exaggeration, 50-plus times. Whether it's protest at the Democratic you know, National Convention covering that, or whether it was the RNC. I mean, I've been to all these things and got it on tape. They'll come over when your camera's off and punch you in the back and say, ooh, you know, watch it. The cops are with me. And then tell you, we're taking over. We're going to put you in a camp. We're going to have our way with you. And they even brag on their sites about it. And they say, you know, Stalin killed people. We're going to kill you. And they really have a bloodlust fantasy. Uh, every time I talk to them, they know they're not liberals. These really are like a group of pirates or a gang who see themselves as having positions of power within this takeover. But like Hitler's brown shirts or any other authoritarian takeover, they are actually the first people to be eliminated once the takeover happens. And, and, and because the true controllers understand these are scum who know where all the bodies are buried. But have you run into this where they, where they talk about how much they disdain you and how they can't wait to get your guns and how they can't wait because they fantasize and say, you'll never defeat the military. It's ours. We're going to come to your house with the military and kill you. You see it all. I mean, have you seen it like I've seen it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, back when we first started Oath Keepers, there were people on Daily Coast bragging about how when they when they uh, unleash airstrikes and artillery on our homes, on our women and children's heads, on our wives and children's heads, that we'll, we'll, we'll give up. And so this is the attitude they have. It is very bloodthirsty. It's, it's very much the same kind of mindset that you saw during the Civil War. Many of the people in, in, in the North looked on the Southerners as being, you know, worthy of being mass, um, you know, exterminated. So this is the attitude we see. We saw in Nazi Germany and Stalinist Russia. So definitely there. But the thing is, is that they think that the military is just going to be mindless robots and go along. And I got, you know, I got news for them. I, I've talked to guys who are platoon commanders, and their entire friggin' platoon understands what's going on, and have already had, had discussions about what they're going to do when the, when the government goes rogue, and they're going to fight on the side of the resistance. And this is going to be a huge, huge split within their own ranks. It's not going to be a, um, only the, the government entirely on one side, including the military, and on the other side the people. It's going to be a big mess. And so they're opening up hell on earth. 
for themselves and for us. And by the way, for people that haven't studied history, this happens over and over again in other countries, not just here. Uh, people ask, you know, why am I doing two or three broadcasts today? Why am I here during the holidays? Because we don't know how much longer we're going to have on the air if this continues to go down this line. And again, I'm not bloodthirsty. I am horrified by what's happening. It, it, it is so horrible that we've let the criminals go so far that now they think they can do anything. Stuart, you worked under Ron Paul in Congress. Uh, you know, last year they had all the news covering how billions are being made every f decade or so by members of Congress, the House and Senate, on insider trading. And when they got caught in insider trading, they said, well, we're allowed to. There's no law. Well, there were laws. They weren't exempt. So the media said, well, you better make a law. So they actually made a law legalizing insider trading for Congress, but saying that the law made it criminal, where they have to get a waiver from the House or Senate Ethics Committee always, you know, run by the top uh, foxes in the hen house. I, I mean, the boldness of the Congress openly insider trading and giving congressional money to companies they and their spouses own, uh, sometimes startups, you know, where they give their own startup 25 million or, I mean, it, it, it's unprecedented. And, and so I see their perspective. I mean, DynCorp came out seven years ago, was, you know, running all these kidnapped little kids and women. And I've, we've seen Cynthia McKinney, you know, valiantly grill um, Rumsfeld about it. And they said, well, they're not going to get in trouble for it. So, so you've been there in Congress. It's obviously getting worse. But how many good people are there? Because it seems like even the good people are naive about how bad it is. I don't blame them. I mean, if the people running the government get to kidnap American kids and fly them overseas for snuff films and they insider trade publicly, I guess they think they can have a civil war against us and win, but they don't get it. It's the physical act of taking the gun, the physical act of raising taxes to where they bankrupt you. That's what people feel, and it's the going one step too far by saying they're going to declare war on gun owners and publish our names in the newspaper and SWAT team us. I mean, they're starting a fight when they already gutted us and had basically won, slowly strangling us. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. Well, this is kind of like the Stamp Act back in the time of the founding generation. There was a long chain of abuses, but it was a Stamp Act in particular that really pushed Americans onto the side of, of rebellion because every one of them felt it personally. They all used, you know, they paid bills, they sent letters, anything to do with paper had to have a stamp on it and a tax paid. And so each person felt it personally and was reminded and reminded of the humiliation and the subjugation of unconstitutional action by, by the parliament. This is much the same. You can have the NDAA, which in theory allows the president to grab anybody, but it doesn't affect your daily life. Life goes on. You can have the Patriot Act, same way. Or you know the NSA spying on you. But, but you don't feel it personally. This is very personal. Every gun owner who owns an AR-15 has to go down and register like a sex offender. And they know that that weapon will not be passed on to their children, that their culture will die with them. The, the message is that your children now belong to us and your culture will die with you, you slave. Come down and get registered, slave. And that's the thing that's going to be different about this. It will impact millions of Americans directly about something that they care about in a very personal way. And that's what's going to push them over the edge. And the elites don't understand that because they don't have the same kind of gun culture. They don't feel it the same way we do. I know you and I care about the rest of the Bill of Rights just as much as the Second Amendment. But for many gun owners out there, it's the one last thing that they really care about. And this is going to push them over the edge. It is because uh, we're going to go ahead and play that D D D Diane Feinstein clip right now where she says, I want Mr. and Mrs. America's uh, guns. We'll play that clip now. Then when we come back, I'm going to bring up another clip, but here it is. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. Well, Stuart, you just saw that clip. What's your, what's your take on her arrogance? Well, that was back in 1995. That's the first thing, is things have changed a great deal since then. The, the uh, gun owners in this country are much more resolved to keep their arms, and there's also the full context of all that has happened post 9-11. The Patriot Act, the, N the NSA spying on Americans, 
the creation of NORTHCOM, the NDAA, and most of all, the internet and the Ron Paul revolution since then. Things are so vastly different than they were back in 1995. Like I said, you know, Milan LeBay, my message to, to, to uh, Feinstein is- Come and take him. Yeah. I would, maybe I shouldn't cuss on your air, but I'd, I would say come and take them, bitch. But, you know. No, that's okay with her. Well, hey, don't be mean <laughs> to female dogs. Milan, Milan LeBay, bitch, is, is the message of Feinstein. But things have changed. Hold on. It's come and take them whore. Yeah, that's right. Come and take them whore. Well, no, that's so, not fair to whores, though. I mean, what do you say about a despotic insider trading pig? who is a nasty control freak who went to Congress with a million dollars and has over a hundred million. I mean, she's a monster. She's a piece of trash. She's a, she's a, she's a pig that wants, and I saw her in Congress go, I have a concealed carry. I know the feeling of being scared and the security of having the gun, but I still want your guns. I mean, she wants all these people behind closed doors to live like people do in New York and Chicago, you know, with four or five times the rape and murder rate. They want us to live in fear. They hate the fact that even though they've robbed our money and robbed our future and destroyed our country and poisoned our food and water, we still have guns. And it's a reminder to these angels of death, because that whore is too nice. That, that that we are still have those basic ancient archaic uh, systems passed down. And they absolutely hate it in their face. It scares them because they want to use guns against us, just as the FBI file showed with Obama's mentors in those meetings, saying they want to put 50 million of us in re-education camps and kill half of us. Their religion is beating the brains of Christians out. I'm telling you, these people, look, we have the Alexander Solzhenitsyn quote. Let's put that up on screen, and I'm going to read this to people here and then give you about five minutes of anything else you want to cover as we go back and forth here in this incredibly dark time. But uh, go ahead and put it on screen. Now, this is the Alexander uh, Schultz and Nietzsche quote of, oh, how later we burned in the camps. And, oh, how we burned in the camps later, thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family. Or if during periods of the mass arrest, as for example in Leningrad, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, people had not simply sat there in their lairs, paling and pawling with terror at every bang on the down store's door or at every step on the staircase, but had understood they had nothing left to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else they had. Yeah, that's the point. They didn't have guns in Russia, but they had hammers. Folks, you get all the guns you want. The organs that means the police state, would very quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transport, and notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst, the cursed machine would have gone and ground to a halt. If, if we didn't love freedom enough, and even more, we had no awareness of the real situation. We purely and simply deserved everything that happened after. And the, what they put... 60 million people over the 30, 40 years of purges in different death camps, worked about half of them to death, conservative numbers, 30 million, 10 million um, Ukrainians, millions of Poles. And the Poles, finally, after 60 years of this, did start doing what Schultz and Eason. By the 80s, they'd gotten copies underground of his book, and you know what they started doing? You know what started happening to secret police, Stuart? Tell people. Yeah, they were killed. Because of Schultz and Eason's book, stuff that happened in the 40s and 50s. What's your comments on that quote we just gave? And this, well, this is this is the point: is that we are aware of that history. We are aware of what has happened in every other country where you've seen registration of guns and then disarmament. We know where, where it leads. We know where it's going to go. And so Americans need to make a decision right now where their Patrick Henry moment is, where their line in the sand is. And I think it needs to be that we will not comply with this bill. And if they come after us, if they pass this and come after us, we will fight back. And we need to stand up right now and say that so that we don't think we're alone and the only ones and just pale in terror waiting for the knock at the door. And I don't think it's what, that's what's gonna happen. If the cat's out of the bag, we do understand the full extent of the situation and we do love freedom enough in this country to fight. And there are enough of us to do that. And that's the big message to the power elites out there, is it's not going down the same way. 
as it went down in Russia. This is not Russia. We're not Russian peasants. We're Americans. We kicked their butts before, and we'll do it again. So but what we have to do right now is a preemptive refusal, and we need to go and hold. If you want to have any chance of stopping this, every Republican in the House of Representatives, I mean all of them, but especially the Republicans, need to hear from you that if they even think about voting for any of this stuff, I don't care how they, maybe they water it down and they do compromises, no compromise. We don't want one piece of infringement on our rights. If they do any of this, they are done politically. Their name is mud. They're they're out in the woods, out of the woodshed by us, and we're going to root them out of power. So they need, we need to make examples of all the ones right now, like Hutchinson down there in Texas. Even though she's an outgoing senator, she needs to be publicly shamed. Same goes for King in New York. All these rhino Republicans who are saying they favor an assault weapons ban or a magazine ban need to be publicly shamed with a big red T in their chest for traitor. Right now, make an example out of them so the rest of them have the fear And by of the way, it's going to make the news if, like the proto Tea Party, you go to all the senatorial events, all the town halls, all the little meet and greets they do, bring your buddy with a camera and because all these guys are like, well, the shooting war starts, I'm ready. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not go there. Info war them now. I mean, yeah. put up banner hangs, call talk radio, call Congress, write letters. But more importantly, go to their website. They'll have a list of when they're going to be where, what they're going to do. Get on a plane, fly to Washington, go into their office and say, look, we're not putting up with it. Okay, listen, you little bastards. You may be able in our name to kill people worldwide, and all the rest of it, but you're not going to get away with it. And that's my point here, Stuart, is that they have a fantasy they talk about on all the authoritarian, fake liberal sites. You, you know, you just talked about it, where they say, oh, this is great. When they don't turn the guns in, we're going to kill them. They actually believe he's going to be Abraham Lincoln, and they're going to call gun owners Klan members, even though the Klan got gun laws passed, as you know. And they really think they're going to call us baby killers and attach us to school shootings that are very suspect and get our guns. I mean, they're crazy. Th th this, this is not going to work. And I'm not on their side telling them back off, but they don't even have self-preservation. There's a demoniac criminal energy about them where they, they think we're facing four years with pardon power. No one can stop us. I mean, look, they're using al-Qaeda to overthrow countries, and it's in the news. I mean, I mean it, it's like the power elite have gone Caligula. Well, no, but that's just the power elite. It's also, like you said, these rank-and-file followers. They've got this lust of power in them right now. And they think that all they got to do is pass a law or have an executive order uh, issued by Obama or through the UN treaty. They think they could just, once they do one of these mechanisms, and that's it. That's the end of the argument. But they don't understand that that's only the beginning of the argument, just like in the American, Re American Revolution, except that this will be even worse. They will be targeted. I mean, I think that if they pass this bill, um, I think the legislators who vote for it will be assassinated, frankly. I think that'll be, that's how it'll go. It won't be that they'll just send out their minions and police officers will die and soldiers will die and, uh, and on the one side and veterans on the other side. It's not going to be like that. They're going to, they're going to be military targets too. And they're going to be killed. I'm not threatening anybody. I'm just, I'm just making a, pre a prediction of what's going to happen. This is how it's going to be. They, they think they're immune, but they're not. They cannot walk around with enough security to keep from being shot by a sniper. It just can't be done. Well, I mean, they couldn't even secure Baghdad. I mean, I mean they really think they're going to do this in America. Not everybody's not going to buy their propaganda, Stuart. No, there are millions of Americans right now. As I said in my speech out of Paul Fest uh, in Florida, I said, look, you know, once you've had your eyes opened up and you're part of the, the freedom movement, that's it. You're lost to the elites from there on out. Their propaganda does not work any longer. Their spin and their manipulations just don't work. They do not work on millions of Americans and never will. The only way they can deal with us is to kill us. That's it. But By the way, Brzezinski in his new book says that. He says 20 years ago, you can find the exact quote online. I bought the stinking book. He has like five big crises facing the elite. I forget the exact name. It's at home. I scanned through it. I didn't really read the whole thing. But he goes, what are the major threats in his little voices? He says, one of the major threats we face is that, uh, you know, they're going to come after us, and it is a great danger. Uh, I mean, uh, they do understand it. You know, the real kingpins are all running off to Europe and running off to armored redoubts while they're little paid pimps 
are going to stay behind during all this. And I just can't. You know what, Stuart? I, I think I think they know there's going to be a fight. I think they're willing, willing now in their frenzy, to be in danger to really go after America. I mean, I I, I think they, I think at certain levels they know. Well, sure, at the very top. But I'm talking about all, all the little mid-level useful idiots like Diane Feinstein and all the all the cheerleaders for her on the web. They don't know. They think that they can just pass. I mean, I went to Yale Law School. I understand the mindset of a lot of these people. They really believe that they can they can manage to pass a law. They can get a you know a, a raw control of power politically just for a short time and pass a law. They believe that's it. That's the end of the argument. And they, they have this total faith in, in their own ability to game the system. But they're not looking at things um, accurately. They have no idea that it's only when they start hammering us that people are going to wake up. <laughs> right. It's like going into a bear cave and jabbing the bear in the butt with a knife. I mean, the, the fight has just begun. Well, they look at, you know, it's kind of like what the British thought back in, at the time of the founding. We had put up with so much. They put up with warrantless searches. They had put up with denial of jury trial. They had put up with with impressment of, of men in, into the into the British Navy, and, and which was violence. literal slavery. I mean, right. I mean, where they worked you, you got four hours sleep a day. You know, the Boston Massacre had happened, and still there wasn't a rising up. And so many of the Patriot leaders were becoming discouraged and thought that the people could never be woken up. But it, it, in the end, it was their attempt to disarm them that finally galvanized the armed resistance. And then it was like a flood dam opening up. And then it was a huge flood of resistance across all the colonies. Well, and isn't that, that historically, and I mean, you also see it in Africa where they try to disarm a group, there's uprisings, and it happens in Asia. But that goes back really to the wars because for a thousand years, all over Britannia, but also in Scotland, there were uprisings when they would try to take the Scots weapons. I mean, it, it, it's not like this is the first rodeo. No. But, but they're making the same mistake. I mean, they look at modern history, and, and many, even among the patriot movement, look at Americans and go, oh, Americans will put up with thing. They're soft. They're, they're cowardly. They put up with the Patriot Act. They put up with NSA spying, with Obama assassinating American citizens. And it's a valid point. How much more can they take? But just because they have also allowed a long train of abuses to happen without fighting doesn't mean they won't fight. And I can tell you that there are millions of veterans who will fight. I can, you can take it to the bank. They are going to fight. And so I know it's not going to go down like it did in Nazi Germany or Stalinist Russia, where there was very little resistance until it was way too late. I know it is not going to be like that. Well, what they want is to abuse and attack gun owners and then have gun owners strike back. They're going to call it terrorism. So I want to try to fix this peacefully, just absolutely to the end. But when they start coming to people's houses, and SWAT teaming because you won't turn your guns in like the real crocodile Dundee and the 2,000 plus people they killed. I'm sure, Stuart, you know they killed thousands of people in Australia over the first decade of the, of the gun ban. I mean, they would go out and burn your house down and kill you. And they went to the rural communities. And, and by the way, tens of thousands of police got shot up in the Crocodile Dundee story, what was it? He killed two cops, they killed him, but they came to his house to take the gun. I mean, this is not good for police to be doing this. This is about the most dangerous thing you could ever try to do. No, it's not. And I would, I would rather appeal to the sense of honor and what's right, but it is an important point. And many of our own police officers and oath keepers are talking to their fellow officers and letting them know that, look, man, not only is this the wrong thing to do, not only is it a violation of your oath, it's also not healthy because they're going to be, be fighting back. And if you're rolling around in a patrol car, it's kind of hard not to be, you know, they know where you are. And so police are very vulnerable. Police in this country, a lot of them don't understand how their safety is dependent upon the goodwill of the American people. If people wanted to kill them, they certainly could because they're so easy to, to identify. They're easy to find. And so- And this you know, is all painful to talk about, uh, but that's why the police are going to unmark cars and that's not gonna matter. Once the blood feuds start, once they start really hurting us, I just, we've got to stop this. Stuart, is there any way to stop it? Well, I think the way to stop it is, like I said, a mass stand up right now, a nullification in the state legislatures, uh, nullifications by your sheriff, by individual police officers. And this is the way police can, can protect themselves to declare that they will not do it very publicly so that people in their community know that they are on their, on their side. And they have to vow not only not to participate, but also to interpose and defend their, their people against it. 
And if the veterans join in in the community in mass, backing the cops up, backing the sheriff up, and the state legislature, that's the way to keep the blood from starting to spill, is to stand up and say, you will not come into our county or we will arrest you. That's what the sheriffs have to do. But even before that, right now, we need to stand up and say that. But at the same time, you've got to go and put pressure on your congressman right now. Make an example, shame, publicly shame anybody who has stepped up and said they support this. And then go to the rest of them and say, look at what we're doing to that person. We're shaming them. They are done politically. You, if, you wanna, if you go down this road, you'll be committing political suicide. Your career is over. That's the only way you can get the people in the House to have the, the, the cojones to stand up to this and say no. Otherwise, they'll go along. Like, Bonner just caved. You know, all these, Lindsey Graham, all these squishy Republicans are going to cave unless you put the fear of God into them. Right but now. don't they see 10 million guns now sold in December? They're reporting 5 million was the previous record. Huge lines out the gun shops. Yeah, and you know, and those are not just people who are buying them to have a gun so that could be grandfathered in or who are buying them for, for profit. These are people, I've talked to quite a few of them in gun stores, they're buying them because they are very concerned about our future and they want a weapon to defend themselves with. They are not going to want to turn these things in. That's not why they're buying them. They're not buying them to turn them in. By the way, they're they not... just put an article up. Can you guys put that back up? Did I read that right? They're saying use the mass shooting models uh, in Australia as the pretext to take our guns. I just saw that headline. And what's incredible about it is that there's been 88 deaths, as they report in this article, in quote mass shootings. Most of those are gang related. 10,000 people killed, most of them criminals invading homes. That sounds like a big number. There there are, what, four times that from suicides every year, four times that from automobile accidents. I mean, it's not even on the list, but with the 315 million. Well, Stuart, it's really been good to talk to you. I, uh, I just don't even know what to say at this point. The, the establishment is out of control. And uh, anything else you'd like to add in summation that you think is important? Um, just that we need to decide right now. This is the this is the you know put up or shut up moment for the American people. Are you going to be free or not? Um, and you need to understand how late the hour is and just come to terms with it. Recognize where we are. But here's the thing: there can be a peaceful resolution, although the window is is slamming shut very quickly. We have one last chance to fix this peacefully, and that is as we all stand up as one together and say no and then put pressure on our representatives in Congress, but also nullifying the states. But even if that doesn't work, even if they still pass this through, we have to decide right now what's more important to us, being free or our own personal uh, survival. I'm willing to die to make sure my children are free. If that's the attitude every American had, or, or even a, just a, a large minority, like 20 million of us, if we all have that same kind of attitude, then we will prevail, then we will not let our republic fall and our children will inherit a free country. Whether we live or die does not make a difference. What matters is, is whether our children are free. And so we need to have that focus and that commitment. If we do that, we will prevail. If we don't, then we will go the way of Nazi Germany or Stalinist Russia, being taken out one at a time. Come together right now and stand up or be slaves. Pat Tillman gave up something like $5 million a year contract to go join the Army Rangers uh, same army you were in, to go out and believe that he was fighting al-Qaeda. And he got there and found out we were growing the drugs. He found that it was all staged. He wrote letters home to his family. They murdered him. Imagine the same energy of people out there to understand, folks, globalists, foreign banks have captured America. They are shutting the economy down. They are paying to ship our jobs to China, where poor slaves build the goods. E if it was just robotic, real liberals who were just morons and wanted my guns, I would fight their legislation, but I wouldn't be ready to go to war if they tried to take the guns. It's that I know that these aren't misguided liberals. These are authoritarians, and I know how bad they are. And I know about the, how they're murdering all the Christians in Syria right now. I mean, there's footage of them killing Christian families and feeding them to dogs, backed by U.S. forces. I don't know how, 
there's not a rebellion, Stuart, uh, by our troops. They're in Turkey arming Al Qaeda. How do they bring Al Qaeda to CIA bases and train them with U.S. forces? I'm really ashamed. And I know there probably were rebellions. I know that it happened in Katrina with the gun confiscation. We didn't learn until years later. So maybe there have been. We just don't know about it. Uh, but it's just, it's so cartoonish level now how evil the people are running things that I, I can't rationalize not fighting them as hard as I can because the worst scenario I can dream up, it's still worse because I'm not a psychopath. So in closing... Uh, just your comments. I mean, do you ever have that feeling of like this has become like fantasy land or Twilight Zone or something? Because those of us that are informed, we're watching this, and it's just, it's it's beyond bizarre. And 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 that so many of the even wealthy elite who aren't psychopaths would allow this dangerous of a technocratic control system in. No one is safe under this. I mean, this is this is exterminist. Well, it's like a cancer. This, this is what happens in, you know, in East Germany, Nazi Germany, um, all the communist countries. This, this is the same kind of system that's put in place there. Um, but we need to come to terms with the fact that they're not going to give up. If they don't get it through legislatively, they'll do it through executive order or they'll do it through the UN treaty, which is better, though, for us because it, it destroys legitimacy. This is the, this is the thing. The, the Benghazi gate, uh, abandonment of the men there who died has ticked off a lot of veterans, a lot of current serving. What's going on right now in Syria, you just talked about the killing of Christians, it is the same thing, ticking off a lot of people. Every, one, every person out there has, has a certain key that will turn the lock to their consciousness. They're all different. But here's the thing about the abuse of the, of the elites. The more they abuse, the more they overstep, the more arrogance they have, the more the mask comes off, the more people they wake up by doing that. And all they do is drive more and more people over to the side of the patriot movement. They drive more and more of them into our ranks, including with the guys in the military, most importantly. And so they are helping us. This is a gift to us, frankly. Uh, Feinstein's bill and her arrogance is a golden gift. Because like you said earlier, now you can say, look, Americans, this is not uh, conspiracy theory. It's not conjecture. This is happening right now. They told you they don't want your guns. They were lying to you. They do want them. I can go to veterans and talk about the NDAA or the Federal Reserve and the collapse of the economy until I'm blue in the face and not wake them up. But if I talk to them about Feinstein's bill and show them a copy of it and what she wants to do to them, they will wake up with that. And There's by the way, what's worse is I mix up the committees. Is it rulemaking or the markup? The point is she's over the committee to bring bills in and she's over the intelligence committee. And they're saying Obama's going to go with her bill. I even caught Biden on tape saying it. So the point is, I would love to believe she was some crazy witch from San Francisco and that this wasn't a threat. This is their plan, Stuart. I hope no, people out there understand this is the play they're calling. I mean, this is it. This is what's coming out of the shotgun formation. Oh, yeah, certainly. This, this, I mean, the Blue Ruby Committee is just going to advocate that they do her ban. But that's, that's the point, though, is, is that it's good. I want them to pull the mask off all the way. Better now than when there's 30,000 Predator drones in our sky. If we're going to fight, then let's get it on now, okay? Uh, it's, it's just unbelievable. And I hope viewers out there know, I mean, this is not a game here. I mean, I mean I've mean, i studied history. I've studied it all. And I, know, and I look at their buildup against us. And all I can say to people is whatever that key is that gets you to wake up, they're not going to stop, okay? These people are out of their minds. Crazy like a fox, yes, but I've studied tyrants and psychopaths. It's basic criminology. Criminals always do greater and greater crimes subconsciously trying to get caught. And because they get a thrill out of it being more and more reckless. I mean, I think that's it, Stuart. Yeah, well, that's part of the hubris of it is they get, they get drunk on their own power and their own sense of, of, you know, their own false sense of invincibility, and they keep going until they go too far, and then they wind up, you know, wondering why they're standing on a platform about to be hung. So, like Mussolini and like Ceausescu and thousands of yeah. others in history. I mean, they just don't get it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, they hope to be they hope to be Joseph Stalin, die of old age, um, presuming he died that way. But they yeah, the word is they really poisoned him because his own people were so scared of him. And there were some right. reforms after he left, even though they were it was still bad guys. It was it's like the the Chinese locked up Mao Zedong's wife and kind of let him die of old age. I mean, you know, even the worst tyrants don't like the mega crazy tyrants. Stuart, in closing, 
when did you pass the psychological Rubicon? It was about a year ago. I remember you started talking about being ready to die, and you're a serious, smart guy. You know, uh, won awards at, at your university, uh, and uh, you know, our constitutional lawyer worked for Ron Paul. I mean, you know, for me, the moment. Many years ago, I had death threats, physically attacked, things like that, that I decided that I'm not into dying, I'll never commit suicide, but if it happens, that's why I go everywhere without bodyguards. I mean, if it happens, I'm at peace with it. Uh, you know, better to even just have them kill me quickly than take me off to some dungeon. And it's almost, it's not almost like the moment I accepted death, the world became deeper, uh, beauty became sharper, uh, discernment became better, and it was like, I've actually become a man. I mean, it, it, it's a magic moment, and, and, and I hope other Americans will step into that realization, but also don't want to just go out and die in the fight. If you're willing to die for it, how hard will you fight for it in liberty in the information war now so even if the fight comes our numbers are greater and it's not as great a cost for the innocents because whenever I have that shadow of fear in my heart wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning thinking oh my god I'm Alex Jones I'm exposing the globalists at point-blank range they could kill me they could kill my family I realize my family's already gone if they win I mean it's that understanding of we didn't do this we realize it's the truth. We realize we have evil coming down on us, and we've got to stand against it. That is a very empowering thing, and I want the men out there and the women out there, join us in history. Step across the line like at the Alamo. That's what it's all about, because that's when you really live is when you're not afraid to die. Final comments on that, Stuart. We're going to end the transmission. No, I agree completely. I, mean, I almost died twice when I was in the Army. I consider myself to be on bonus time. Um, but this is the attitude you have to have. Like I said, like I said in my speech at Lexington Green back in 19, uh, 2009, is all that matters, we're all gonna die anyway, no one gets out of here alive, but all that matters is our children are free. And remember, there's that one famous quote, you know, duty is heavy as a mountain, death is light as a feather. You only die once, but do your duty. Your duty is to your children, and it's all that matters is they are, that they are free. I don't care about dying, I'm ready to go. But, you know, of course, don't make it easy on them. Make, make it expensive. If you're going to have to fight, make it expensive to kill you. But don't be afraid to die. And it's only when you, like you, as you said a minute ago, only when you are no longer afraid of your own death and you embrace it that you truly live as a man. So I think it's a good idea. Good point. What's Step the right. time frame? How long do you think we have to beat them? Uh, I mean, to get the word out and stop this legislation. Um, I would say we have a matter of weeks to put the pressure on the House of Representatives to stop this. So we got to be out in the streets. Like I said, focus like a laser on your congressional delegation, your representatives, your senators, and use shaming. We need to do public shaming of those who have already supported it and then use that as an example to the others. And here's the big point, is you got to get across to them that you will not vote for them ever again. It doesn't make a difference if, if they're the lesser of two evils. It doesn't make a difference as if, if the Democrat will win. So what? That's why we're where we are now, because of that lesser two evils bunch of nonsense we've all been playing. Don't play it anymore. Make it clear to them you won't. But I worry that they've they pulled that on Americans so many times, and Americans continue to roll over and vote for them again, that they won't believe it's credible. So you got to make it credible. you got to make them realize this I, is different. I agree with you. And, and, and we've also got to look at the law and sue them for their different crimes, sue them for the different actions, and let them know you're suing them. Even if they beat it in corrupt courts, beat the rap, don't beat the ride, it's time to go after them in every legal and lawful way we can before the shooting war starts. Because never in my spirit, you know, even before the mass shooting, Stuart, I was on air saying, this is it, I can feel it. I mean, could you feel it the last few months? I, I mean, and you wish it wasn't real, but you're, when your gut tells you, red alert, danger, Will Robinson. I mean, I, I just cannot believe how much trouble we're in, and I wish the general public out there realized how much trouble we're in. Well, certainly, I mean, and this is why I started Oath Keepers. I could see the structure of the police state being erected, and the most critical piece of it is the laws of war being brought home and applied to the American people. Um, I can see the structure. I don't wait for the full effects before I oppose it. Um, so yeah, you, you can feel it getting, it's like a noose is, noose is tightening around our necks and it's coming really in a short term time frame. But this is a gift. This allows us to wake up millions of Americans. In fact, right now, 
millions of Americans are awake because of this. That's why they're running to gun stores and buying guns and ammunition. They're cleaning out all the guns, all the ammo. And I heard about one gun store that had about 600 people buy AR-15s who would never owned them before, and they wanted training. So they're training them. They're putting them through classes on how to use their AR-15. They're not buying them just as Because despite all the brainwashing, they ask the people in polls, why are you doing it? I don't trust the government. People inherently know evil. They know we've got murdering scum running things that want to put us in re-education camps. I mean, this is incredible. Stuart Rhodes, very important interview. Thank you so much, my friend. Oath Keepers, uh, give out the website. Tell us about Operation Sleeping Giant. You bet. Oathkeepers.org and our Operation Sleeping Giant is a, is a link on there to that also. And that's our outreach to the veterans in particular to get them to focus on security, on preparedness, on sound money, and state nullification. So go check it out. And the UN Treaty, uh, you had one point before we went to this interview, you, we were talking before we went on air, that you were talking about uh, the UN Treaty and an interesting point that was made in that. Right. Well, there's an article on, on routers about that where they talk to UN delegates on condition of anonymity who state that they're hopeful that the Newtown shooting in Connecticut will make it easier for them to pass this new UN treaty. Um, which, what's really odd about that, though, is that for many, you know, for years now, they've told us that it won't affect the gun rights of Americans, will not affect internal use of guns in the United States. And yet they're now saying that they hope the Newtown shooting will help them get it passed. It doesn't make any sense. And so what that tells me is the NRA is correct when they say it will affect your guns here in the United States. And one, one last thing about that is, is in the article, they quote, a U.S. official is saying that they will not go along with any treaty that will infringe on the constitutional rights of Americans. Well, a lot of guys will read that and go, oh, that's nice. You know, they're not going to infringe on our rights. Well, just remember, Feinstein is letting you know exactly what they think about your rights. You, they, don't, they don't give a right to anything. They think you only could keep guns that they consider to be okay for you to keep for now. So as far as they're concerned, they, they, can, they can ban any gun out there and still not be infringing on your so-called rights. Because their view of the Second Amendment is very, very narrow and constrained, that you only have a right to hunt and to own guns that they consider okay for hunting purposes, or maybe self-defense. And that's the standard deal. And then they finally say you can have them at a hunting club where you check them out. CNN's right. now proposing that. And final point of 20 final points, because we've got to get to this final piece of news here. What do you make of Piers Morgan? Well, I think it's just, just an example of the, of, the, of the arrogance of the political elite. And this is, this is what they're trying to do. And, and they think it's going to work. They think that if they get on there and, and Pierce Morgan calls Larry Pratt an idiot and a stupid person, that that's going to you know, somehow demonize him and marginalize him. All it does is confirm what a, what a jackass Pierce Morgan is. And, and, the, and the news media, the mass media out there, as you know, is dying. CNN is dying. Um, all, the, all the cable networks are dying because people understand what they are. All they are is mouthpieces of Sauron. And all and this is this is just par for the course. So let him let him do that. The more he acts like a, like a clown like that, the better for us because we can we can wake up more Americans to the to the, um, the absurdity of modern CNN and and Fox News and all of these news outlets. And they by the going, way, at their peak in the uh, like 1991 or so, they had about 10 million viewers on one show per hour. Now their top show has half a million. They are dead. And that's why they're going to try to take over an authoritarian move. It is out of panicking and it, it is out of fear. And I'm just, God help us. I pray to the police and military. I have no wish for them to be a, absolutely chewed up by this. I've tried to stop all these wars they've been in and abused five, six, seven terrors. I fought against putting the troops on all these drugs. I've tried to support troops at the VA. I am not here in some, you know, lust to have a, have a revolutionary war again. And I just pray to God, everybody out there watching gets the word out. Stuart Rhodes, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, out of time. There goes Stuart Rhodes. Uh, just amazing uh, interview. I meant to have him on about 20 minutes. I think we went over an hour. Uh, just, just, just because this is all I talk about. It's all I think about now because our, our worst analysis is coming true. It's, it's not a pleasure to be here on air and to have everything we've talked about unfolding. I'm very sad for everybody. I mean, it, it makes me cry. Earlier, I started crying involuntarily. I couldn't control it. Not even though I was boo-hooing, it was just tears were coming out of my eyes because, because I realized how horrible this is. 
and that even the people doing it are just are just, are just degenerates. I mean, they're, it's like people say, don't you have a hatred of the globalist? I used to hate them. Now I realize they're like dog crap out in my yard. I mean, it's, it's like, it's just something in our way, something that won't go away. And it's disgusting, but here's the deal. I will not bow and lick their stinking boots, and I know they're a bunch of scum, and they're a bunch of bullies and thugs, and we're calling their bluff. Now, in closing here tonight, you know, if we don't pitch books, videos, the word doesn't get out, and we don't support ourselves. If you're not buying PrisonPlanet.tv memberships where you get 10 extra memberships with the same username, passcode, you're insane. I mean, that's 59 cents per month, per person. That just pays for the bandwidth. And people are using the membership, so I'm glad to see that happening. Uh, so please, um, there I am with the Diane Feinstein action figure in that shot. <laughs> I'm going to interview her tomorrow as a little joke. Got to have some fun occasionally. Uh, the point is, is that I am begging all of you to go and get PrisonPlanet.tv memberships. Those that have been given a free membership, you get a membership now and then go give that to 10 people in an email saying, here's your username passcode to this site. Go create a username and passcode unique to prisonplanet.tv and give it to others. Speaking of at cost, you can buy these in groups of 10 up to 100 at cost. And it's at our cost. Not that making money is a bad thing. We got stuff like ProPure we make some money on, great water filters and everything else at InfoWarsStore.com. But you'll notice the last three weeks or so, I don't even really plug products on air because I'm just like, what's, who knows leaving me a show down the road? Just get these in bulk, get them out to everybody you know, and life is an adventure. Uh, you know, I said I'd mention this. Let me find the cover story in this. I mean, the, the magazine just gets better and better. Uh, it's the uh, cover story in it. Gets into, you know, is this the year America dies? Yeah, that's on page 12. And it goes over it. And long after I'm gone, folks, these physical copies, try to internet kill switch this. Obama and the globalist, you know, go go to hell, you know, you know, is my point. 2013, the year America dies, globalists have conquered governments, now they want to conquer the people, Alex Jones, Paul Watson, Europe conquered, now America's turn, Second Amendment in the crosshairs, NDAA, justification for tyranny, re-education camps for dissidents, Obamacare, bank rupting the nation morally and financially, Big Brother uh, becoming uh, pervasive, NSA spying no longer secret, the TSA occupies America, the era of drones, 2013 collapse, rebirth, or stagnation, foreign policy, backing terrorists, more regime change. It just goes on and on. I mean, this is like a color book. Big, glossy, big breasted hit against tyranny. I love that quote from Network, wherever uh, Robert Duvall goes, it's a big hit. It's a big, I'm not going to quote the whole thing. The point is, is that here it is, ladies, and well, nothing wrong with God's creations. The point is, <laughs> he goes, it's a big hit. Anyways, excuse me, I'm sorry. The point is, is that this is here to wake people up. Yeah, low humor, I apologize. We'll bleep that for families. This is a tape part of the show tonight. As long as I've been going, we're going to go live here in a minute. Anyways, <laughs> Marcos is like, yeah, you are, pal. <laughs> Hey, it's the end of the year. I might be in a gulag with some commie, you know, torturing the hell out of me. They've told me they want to. <laughs> Can you imagine one day, like, uh, someday we'll have the guns and put you in a camp. It's like, well, what we know will never happen someday is you'll become a real human. <laughs> Anyways, getting back to what I was saying. Get the magazine, InfoWarsStore.com. Get the ProPure, 10% off promo code WATER, all of it, InfoWarsStore.com. But most importantly, if you're watching this on YouTube later, because we put it up there a day later, go get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership. I mean, 59 cents a month per person. Holy Toledo. All right, that's it. Great job with the crew. And uh, we will, Lord willing, see you back here tomorrow night. We got a good chance, I think, of beating this gun man. The problem is when they stage another mass shooting or it happens by itself, they'll be back again. I mean, it's... I keep hoping for a peaceful solution. I pray for that. I work for that. But Gandhi even said, you can go pull up his quotes, Gandhi quotes on self-defense. He said, I let people beat me up when there was news there and I could show that they were in the wrong because we were simply trying to march to the sea to collect salt because they made you buy it from the British government.
But he said, uh, and Martin Luther King imitated him. But he said, if they're trying to come to you and mow you down and kill you, you got to fight back. And he quoted the Second Amendment. And, and we've used those quotes here on air. He says, the blackest crime of the British, you know, the darkest, e most evil crime was not letting the people, you know, disarming them. So that's my point on that subject. Okay, uh, that's it for the 2013. Lord willing, and we'll be uh, back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because, again, that's it for 2012. 2013 is now upon us. And I wouldn't have said 2013 wrongly if I had a teleprompter, but I don't. Teleprompter free. We'll see you back tomorrow night.